Cuz up. What's happening, man? Mm, back to <laughs> see you, baby. You uh, talking know, shit, hood perspective, baby. It's your boy OG Hood Free, man. You already know what time it is, man. Yes, sir. Mm, who I got with me, baby? T. Mizak. You better know it, man. One and only, man. With, yeah. the K, with the K at the end, man. <laughs> Mac, man, talk to me. <laughs> you talk to me, man. What's man? going on? Where you from, though, big dog? Well. <laughs> <laughs> talk to me. Where you from, man? <laughs> I'm from Where I'm from? Where I'm born or where, where I'm raised? Where well, I can't really say where you're from because you're Bavard. you the yeah. whole Bavard. No where you freshly raised at, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm you raised in Melbourne, man. Melbourne, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was born in Coco. I was raised in Melbourne. Raised off of Melbourne, man. Oh, yeah, no doubt about it. So you, you played both sides? You played Melbourne, Tidesville? What, what sides you played? What mm. side I played? Yeah. <laughs> what you mean played? I'm just break saying. Down when you break, break, break it down, you side you played. When you growed up down there in Melbourne, you came down to Coco, you I mean, just growed up. What I, you did? I grew up in Melbourne, like, but I always came to Coco because my family in Coco. My whole family almost in Coco. So I was I was back and forth both ways. You know yeah, I was you know. So Melbourne growing up, it, I was always Melbourne and Coco. Growing up, it was kind of trouble for you. You had an easy life, man. Talk to me about your <laughs> lifestyle, man. Was it? Uh, man, you already know. There ain't no really no easy with no black man. Coming up in this city, right? Not Come just this, this city, city, any city, man. Coming up in the environment, you know. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it ain't, it ain't nothing easy coming from where we come from. You already know. Say, when well, you was down there in Melbourne, man, what inspired you to get into this uh, industry, man? Because uh, I ain't going to lie. Y'all might not know, but me personally, as I know this man, he was a rapper. He actually was a rapper. He ain't going to let y'all know that. He was actually a rapper. So a rap, break it down man. to me, man. What, what made you switch the game from rapping until, you know, I'm going to push the next man and they'll bring the next rap artist down this way? I Talk mean, to me, man. It was, was kind of by error. You know? Yeah. Because I remember back in the days, um, I had... When I was probably a teenager, I had did a show. I had brought JT Money down here. Was, right. This was a long, long time ago. He was with Poison Clan. So I really didn't even take it serious then. You know what I'm saying? And so every time I see JT Money right now, he always bring it up. He'd be like, man, T-Mac brought me down here when I was like 15, 16 years old. But anyway, fast forward <laughs> to the rap. Later, you know what I'm saying? I was, you know, doing the rap. Doing your rap career. Yeah, 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 let's talk about rapper, your rap man. career, man. <laughs> <laughs> your name was always T Mac as a rapper, you know. Always, man. Always, always been T Mac. <laughs> always, um, man. So what you hit? Uh, you had an album model. You had a one, one we single. Had a lot of, we had, had a lot of stuff, out, man. You know, right now we had a whole catalog: Me Burger, Booby, uh, Chill Wheel. We had, yeah. I mean, uh, Gotta be. But his name Beasley now. Beasley, shout out to Beasley, man. That's yeah. what's up, man. This before you know Brick Boy and all them, you know that's them, they just started rapping <laughs> six months ago, man. You know, shout out to Brick Boy. <laughs> we are gonna get to that later on, man. Cause I got some questions on that, though, man. Brick Boy just started rapping six months ago, man. So but I'm know. saying when you came up, you 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 OG. I'm an OG. You triple OG. I'm gonna be yes, real sir. with you. I yes, look sir. up to you, man. Yes, sir. And growing up in the games, I ain't really see nobody do it like the way you doing it right now. And I was growing up, I seen Lil T doing it. You right. see what I'm saying? Lil right. T was making moves. He was bringing moves from the city. Shout out to Lil T. Shout out to, uh, shout out to Lil T. Uh, Tim Cox. Them boys, though, they were bringing in. Um, back then, I knew Dog Man Entertainment. He was coming from the O, and he was but, making well, moves. Dog Man came through here pretty much in the era with me. You know what I'm saying? Right. Dog Man them came down here, they came down here with me. You know what I'm saying? So, so that was pretty much in that era. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, Tony Brown actually was. Uh, one of the first ones, I mean, before Nino. Nino, that's the GOAT. That's the GOAT. You can't <laughs> so, take nothing from the GOAT. It's that's real. The, that's the GOAT. You know what I'm saying? Nino Lion shot the hill. That's the GOAT. You know what I'm saying? So, um, like I said, everybody else, I didn't get a chance to really witness. You know, they. I see when, when Lil T was doing it, that's when I was first coming home from my state bid. You know okay. So, so that's, you know, it was kind of at the end for him. You know what I'm saying? So it was kind of more of like the Rainmakers, Tony Brown, and all them guys was... You know what I'm saying? Yeah, speaking of state bed, you know, not to cut you off, speaking of state bed, how hard it is to, to take a fall and come back and continue to do the same thing and keep struggling and striving and, I mean, and stay up. People forget about you in, in, in 60 days. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, right, right, right. You know, to be gone years and then come back and then continue to do what you do is, you know, it's kind of it's kind of hard. You know what I'm saying? But I did it. You know? And that's what's up, man. So what's your biggest successful right now as a – and in, in industry as a promoting though, what's, what was one of your biggest successful moves that you made since you've been home? Since I've been home? Yeah, since you've been home. 
I don't know. I done made so many. I can't even really just pinpoint one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? As far as, what you mean? Like, far as concert? Why? As far as, you know, you know, living life. Living life. What what made you happy? You know what I'm saying? That, okay, I'm going to get back to this right here. And this is what I'm going to do to do it. I mean, I had already planned it out. When I was locked up, I was going to come back and do what I do. Right. Because this is what I like to do. Saying? And you got years in the game. Oh yeah, yeah. you got no, many no. years in the game. Now, I don't mention that, dog. You uh, you got a, you got a relationship with a lot of artists. Yes, that's what I really want to ask. You got a relationship with a lot of artists, dog. Correct. And you got a lot of artists in Bavard County itself. Do people ever ask you to introduce you to them artists or anything like that? I mean, I do that on the regular, but like I said, it's on them to build a relationship once I do the introduction. All right. You know what I'm saying? Because if I introduce you to somebody, I mean, they got you got to buy. You know what I'm saying? So. That's up to them after that. I can so, do the introduction. So basically, if you, if I was an artist and you interview and you introduce me to this man, it's up for me to do. It's up for me to go from right there. After that, y'all gotta build your I can't go back to the street and say, oh, T Mac done fucked me up or T Mac done didn't give me the deal I wanted to. Yeah, it ain't on T Mac. You know, so all, all I can do is walk in the door. It's on you after that. <laughs> so, so since you've been home, you, uh, it's hard to keep it going. And you stay oh, consistent, it's, it's you know what I'm saying? Hard, especially in Bavard, well, Bavard, the hardest market. What yeah. make you more consistent than the next promoters around here in Bavard County? Um, I think because I move around a little more. I move around. I don't just do stuff in Bavard County. All right. So when I come back to Bavard County and do anything, it's just because it's just something I just want to do. All right. But it's not, you know, everybody, I'll be like, oh, yeah. But when I come to Bavard, it's just extra. It's just, I just want to do it because I want to do it. At, it's your hometown. Yeah, so. It's mm -hmm. your home time. And knowing that you got a business, you got to take everything as a business level, right? Mm -hmm. And coming back to your city, you want to show as much as love you can. Right, correct. And me, as a guy coming to, I'm coming to you and I'm supporting you, whatever you got going on, if it's a show, if it's whatever, uh, why would I feel like it should be hard? I should never get no support. I mean, people, I mean, you got to understand it's always hard to get support from the people you grew up with. You know right, saying? and then sometimes you got people that didn't grow up with you. They don't even really know you. They just from where you from. So that make it even worse because they feel like, well, I'm gonna put money because they feel like everything that I do is a profit. Right. They feel like if they if they spend uh, thirty dollars or forty five dollars or whatever on the ticket, they feel like I just made all that money. Like that's all profit. You know they saying? don't understand the grind that you have to put in, the list that you have to make they to get, make things happen. They this don't way. Even understand the money that I gotta spend. You know what I'm saying? Coming up and when you doing your thing, man, you ever took a ton of losses? I took a lot of losses. I don't took uh, too, so many losses. <laughs> you scared to talk about your flop? Whatever flop for you, though. I, I, what, what was I'm your I'm first sorry. flop that you realized that made you want to get quick, but you had to keep going? What was your biggest flop that made you want to quit, but want to keep going, though? My biggest flop? Oh, I done had so many. Because we got some player <laughs> clubs, Glade. We had some three, two, one days, you know what I'm saying? I mean, but back then it was a different era. It was back a different then. era, so right? It wasn't too many losses back then because you had different, different, you know, different people. So right. it wasn't really about, um, I mean, it wasn't really about who was doing it. It just was about, you know, everybody wanted to come out and have a good time. Nowadays, you know, back then, you know, fe I mean, dudes actually made money to stunt on the females. They wanted to impress the females. All right. Nowadays, this generation make money because they want to stunt on other dudes. You understand? Know Try to make them feel good. It's a competition. Yeah, they want to yeah it's a competition. It's, it's competitive. You know what right. I'm mean? So that's the thing. So everything now is so competitive, no matter what. So you, you think it, you being in the industry so long, you're a promoter, you know, I'm pretty sure that you're looking at any type of artist or anything, you uh, managed anything? I mean, I got a couple of artists that I manage, but like I say, management, is, it's just pretty hard because everybody just, the internet got it, everybody think that just so easy to blow up. It's just about, it, it's not about basically, you know, who you know like it used to be. You know what I'm so we old school, homie. We come straight out the trunk. We got the motherfucking right. CDs. We on the block. We got shirts. We got we we everything. Right. So what was so hard back then that it is now these days? You know what I'm saying? Because we didn't have the internet. You know what I'm saying. So you think the internet is more easier to get access I mean, for your music? I mean, you could put a, a picture. A female could put a picture up on, on Instagram and get a, get a thousand likes. She a model. She a model now. She a model. <laughs> she a model. I mean, you could put a, a freestyle up there. It, it, it do a thousand views. You a rapper. So, I mean, everything is easy right now. You everything is easy. So, um, Mac, when you was coming up, big dog, listen to me now. Don't get mad at me now. Don't Go get ahead. mad at me now. This we just uncut hood free type shit, man. Go ahead. When you was coming up, man, did you ever fall for another nigga like 
a nigga left a pistol in your car or something like that, though, man. Oh, I caught my first. I caught a pistol charge behind somebody. Somebody left I, it in my car. I took the charge for that. You took the charge like a real nigga. Yeah, I took the charge for that. That's real, man. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I took the charge for that. <laughs> you know, I just wanted Canada to ask you that, though, man. Can't conceal firearm, man. I, I caught a charge for that in my own car. A partner. <laughs> And that's, that. and, that's, and that's the thing. A nigga don't understand when you got a license registration and that's your car, you let your dog hold it and shit. A nigga fuck around and drive it and you that's get exactly fucked up and then it, it's a hundred, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> and it's a hundred though. I got a few charges for people. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it wasn't no secret, but it is what it is. It know? is what it is, man. I just had to ask you that, though, man. You know, oh, yeah. no you know what I'm saying? Just keep it real. Let nigga know. Yes. Yes, a nigga sir. keep it 100 no matter what. You know what I'm saying? That's a fucked up situation. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Could have went left. Could have went and did anything else, but I kept my face clean, shit 100. Yeah. Come right back, face clean, still 100. Oh, yeah, no, I still got right. everybody that love. Oh, T-Mac, yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying? And one thing I can tell you about the people that love you, you're going to love you regardless. Regardless you know what, what bro? The people that hate you, going to hate you regardless. You know what I'm saying? Trust me. So. <laughs> You feel like you capitalize off more of your haters? No, I capitalize off the people that really support me. Because I try. that's who I try to cater to. So that's just like a slant. So, nigga, I capitalize off my haters. Like, like nigga, the more you hate me, I, the I more mean, I motivate me. What, what type of slant I mean, that is, I, though? I'd rather keep my distance from a hater. You know what I'm saying? Man, I really man, keep my distance. See, you fucked me up because you 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 a changed man now, though. You know yeah, what I'm saying? I mean, it, because me growing up, you used to be a little aggressive than what you is. You know what I'm I saying? Mean, you know what? And you didn't take no shit. You like, you know, so listen, it's kind of hard to talk to a changed man. What made this changed man come? Come on, talk to me I now. Mean, at first, I wasn't like this when I first came home. Like, I mean, you say something to me on the internet, I'm going to be like, where you at? I'm going to be where to put it. Right, on right. Me. But then I had to realize that a lot of the people that sell out on the internet, you never see them. They gonna yeah. talk like I don't, you gonna be the softest person where you gonna talk on that internet. You know what I'm saying? So I had to realize like people had to tell me like, bro, this is it's a different era, different type people of vibe, just, man. Soft people gonna sell you out on here, right? People that can't fight gonna sell you out on here. These people gonna sell you out. You do something to them, they gonna put your ass in jail. Yeah. So it took a while for me to grasp that. You know what I'm saying? But once I realized that, man, people gonna talk. Look at you. Look through the internet. You right. see people right now that just soft as hell. They gonna talk all day. They gonna argue. They gonna poke. That's what they do. So, so you can't beat these people. You can't beat these people typing. You can't beat these people. You ain't gonna never see these people. These people ain't gonna come in your basement, and say it. All right. So you just got to deal internet with internet beef. Just, just <laughs> internet talk. You guys, just, you know what I'm saying? Right. Like even though you go up on the Instagram, you see all kind of people in the comments selling out celebrities that they'll never ever see. You think beef still sell right now as records? What? I mean. What, what? I mean I think beef gets you killed now, records. You know what I'm saying? Because if you look every every week or every other day, it's rappers dying. So I mean, it's like <laughs> yeah, talk to me now. So, I mean, it's sad, but the people that's that's living are gonna be the ones that capitalize. On. And they ain't living long enough to survive that money. Nah, they ain't even been in the industry long enough. You know what right. I'm saying? So I mean, you just got to be careful because, like I said, people will be talking. Like you said, people be talking. But you on the flyer, you, you a rapper, you in the studio, you on social media, people know your your whereabouts. So you can't just be selling out to everybody because somebody going to reach out and touch you. You know what I'm saying? So that's, 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 that's what's going on right now. With rap, rappers dying. <laughs> rappers dying. So you think it's safe to be a rapper right now? I mean, it's safe to be a rapper and stay in your, stay in your own your own element. Stay in your own lane. Leave you know. people alone. Because if you get money and you rap it, get your money. You know what I'm saying? You don't see plies and all the boys are no beef. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, I just do his jokes. He laugh, you know what I'm saying? He, man, come on. I mean, he used to do it, but he don't grew up. You know what I'm saying? So, the, no. I'm a, let me take you back to your three, two, one days, man. Okay. Three, two, one days. Take me back. You the first man brought Boosie down here? Absolutely. You the first man brought Boosie down here? I brought Boosie to Sarah Lewakers. You don't remember that? Boosie. <laughs> that's you introduced me to Boosie, man. It was he like, was you know. He was stuck to us like it wasn't nothing there, man. I used to bring, I, I used to take Boosie through the hood. I used to take Boosie everywhere. You, Mark. Boosie uh, was a real nigga. That's to the day. Did you ever see Boosie since you've been home? Yeah, I seen Boosie a few times. I was just with him. I, I did an event with him maybe like a year or two ago. We, uh, it was at Guild. But me and my um, wife was up there. And he had us up there on stage and shit. I mean, I don't see Boosie a few times. And see, you know, for seeing Boosie really on TV, that's really how that man really is. He got a look, you know, a love great, but yeah. Boosie was really fucked up in the head back then, man. Oh, yeah, Boosie was a little wild. You know, man. he had his little crew with him, you know what I'm saying? He kept yeah. a little crew with him. They always came down. The boys got the plane. The boys already had, like, 
ammunition waiting for him when they got here. You know what I'm saying? And that was real. Yeah. Sometimes he just come through, they want to do a walkthrough, just want to hang out, huh? Yeah. Yeah, Bushi's always come through. Yeah. So was you the first man brought Gucci man down here? Yeah, I'm, I probably don't. Well, I know I was the first one to bring. I don't know if they brought him out that level, but right. I mean, I definitely was the first one to bring Gucci. So okay. icy. Oh, yeah, that's when the So Icy was hot. So icy. But I was, I was a Jeezy fan, though, so I kind of right, right. a certain type of way when I did bring him, but you know. <laughs> so I see you brought a lot of artists down here. What about Misko? You brought Misko down here? I brought Misko down here too many times. Yeah, so but T did too though. The T brought uh, Miss Quid out here, but but him and Nino, Nino was real cool with Nino. I yeah, uh, Miss Quid, that was like a dog. speaking of Nino, you ever did any collaboration with Nino? Y'all let's yeah, say let's Nino, get together and bring Nino, one of these big Nino artists. A, me, and, me and Nino did a couple things together, um, like right in the end when he was getting ready to, to say forget it. You know, right, but yeah, the streets had done change a little bit. So Nino was like, man, it's just too much. Just dealing with. Too many knuckleheads, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I remember we had that talk, and he was just like, man, this, these niggas be tripping, man. They, they, you know, they be talking trash, and, you know, like, man, I ain't going <laughs> to. So you, you, you're dealing with that type of situation, man. You got to deal with certain different type of personalities, right? So how did it make you better as a people person, though, man? I mean, my tolerance level got better. I'm I, I see that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like seeing that in you, man. You like you glow different, homie. Right, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, For me, growing up, watching you come to grandma house, watching you just do your thing around the family, you go to different families. You, I see the glow in you, though, baby. I just wanted right. to really know what makes you, you know what I'm saying, change that to be a real people person, though. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because I realized that you know you could lose your life in, in seconds. I'm saying, shots out. Some stupid shit. Uh, excuse me, excuse me. Shots out. I heard you got married. Was that one of the? I heard you got married. Shots out to your wife. You know that's yeah, good. Thank, thank you, my brother. Yeah, but yeah. did that inspire you to I transfer mean, being a people person too? Also, I mean, yeah, because you know, like I said, that's that's one of the things. But like I said, it's just a combination of things that just make you know me be like, you know, it ain't worth it. You know what I'm saying that's definitely one of them. And this type of business, you can't. You got to be a people person. You can't switch sides. <laughs> nah. You know what I'm saying? Because your worst enemy might want to spend the, the most of his money. Yeah, I mean. And people don't realize that, though. You know what I'm saying? I mean, business is business. Like I said, you got to keep a business face on. You know what I'm saying? So, At all times. So, nine times out of ten, like I said, I don't have no issues. I can't think of one person I got an issue with. So, to me, it's pretty easy. You know what I'm saying? Because I know that every time when we do come in contact, you know, they might have a problem with me. Right. I don't, I don't got no issues with nobody. You know what I'm saying? All right. Let's speak of something, man, because you did a show over there on the Cocoa Beach, man, and, mm -hmm. and, and that bitch was wall to wall with dancers. I couldn't make it. I'm going to be real about that. I couldn't make it, but because that bitch was wall to wall. Yeah. I heard people talking about it. It was like $30, $40 at the door. The next thing you know, it went to $200 to $100 at the door. It, These it, people, because everybody. It, I, ain't, it ain't never make it to $200, but it was only $100. That's that what I just heard, you know. But and, you know, people always want to hype up stuff. So this is Bavar. You know that. Yeah, I say, man, T Mac was stripping. <laughs> and then this is what, this is what they do now. When you promote, you run around the club trying to make shit shit right. Everybody at the door say, go get T-Mac. Talk to me now. Everybody. <laughs> How headache that is, though, man. I Everybody mean, screaming, let's go get T-Mac. It's a big headache, but you know what I'm saying? But the thing about it is, like I said, people just going to exaggerate shit, too. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because there was very few people that paid that paid $100 to get in there. Trust me. All yeah. right. The ones that wanted to get in there, the ones got it. It, it wasn't that. It, the only reason I did that because it was just a catastrophe at the door for a second. Right. And everybody was at a standstill. One thing I did was say, okay, well, hundred dollars. And once the line cleared and all the, you know got all the little confusion that way, I went right back down to forty dollars. That's the part they didn't tell you. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, nah, they ain't telling that part. They're not though. gonna tell you that. They ain't you know telling that part though. They not gonna tell you that. That bill was all packed though. It was packed. Yeah. And that, and, then, and then speaking of that club right there, you ain't do it in so long. Was you looking forward to doing it again? You know what I'm saying? Because I know it's hard. It's one of new managements and everything. I mean, it's under pretty much the same management. Over yeah. That, you know when I was there. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? But I think that the, the, the direction that the club was going in was not the, the hood, the hood crowd. Right, right, right. Not black crowd, the hood crowd, as far as the ones with the hood mentality. Right. And necessarily, you know, blacks, it's just the hood. You know what I'm saying? The hood type. People that want to come in there and start trouble, you know, that's what they just were trying to get away from. So it ain't like they don't want blacks there, they just want the right type of blacks there. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so do you do a little uh, promoting in Orlando? Do I who? Promote in Orlando? All the time. What type of clubs you promote in Orlando? Um, I promote pretty much a lot of clubs in Orlando. Anything right? downtown? Like um, I did Tier, I did Celine, I did a few clubs downtown. You know so most people like one of the birthday party, they really come to you and tell you to promote their party. Would you do it, or do they, 
Do you I charge mean, them or what, what What type I of situation mean, that be? It just depends because, like I said, it just, I mean, most time people just have to get on what I already got going on versus me just building a birthday party for them from scratch. You know right. I mean? Because everybody in this pop, you know, everything based on popularity these days. You okay. So it just depends. And speaking of, I heard so you, uh, you got a shirt business. You do shirts? Yes. Design, custom designs, what type of shirts you do? I, uh, do, I do whatever. Whatever kind of shirts you want. Embroidery, screen print, <laughs> digital. I do it all. So what's the name of the company? It's called We Print. We Print? Yeah. How can they find that company? Now? Just hit me up. <laughs> I'm saying it. on the network. How can they find it on the platforms? Nah, we do uh, you know, We just do a word of mouth, but we, we do very well. With it. So y'all looking out this expanding y'all company right on the print shirts that y'all I mean, get on the website, anything? We, we stay pretty busy because, like I said, we I mean, we always book every week. All right. So right now it's consistent. So I don't even think we can expand it no more unless we get a bigger... You know what I'm saying? The reason why I shot to you, man, because you did my brother's shirts, man. My mother, oh, yeah. she cried. She did it. it. You did your thing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you did your thing, man. You did your thing, big dog. I didn't know I was going to do that, man. You know I was going to come through for that. So what you got upcoming for the, for, for Bavar County? What you got upcoming for Coco? You go uh, well, talk to me, man. You well, got anything big popping? I mean, next week, I got a, um, a snap, not a Snapchat party, but a TikTok party. A TikTok party? Yeah, that's going to be at, um, at um, in Melbourne. So, I want to know how that's going to turn out. See, the TikTok party, you got to follow the beat and do everything what somebody say. I be doing a little daddy-daughter shit, you know what I'm saying, TikTok. Yeah, so I got it. about two, three of them right now, so I be trying to learn it, the TikTok. So that's what we got to do? The best TikTok get $1,000, man. Best TikTok. So you got to have a partner or you, well, how, how that go? Explain how that go. TikTok, however, you know. You, you could be you and your child or your, the child would come or it's adults nah, only. Yeah, it's adults well, only. That's what I'm saying. It's Talk to me. Nah, nah, adults only? Yeah. All adults, TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would love to see that though, man. That's going to be all the same. Oh, yeah. That's next week. Next Saturday. So you also grow uh, First Friday grown folks? Yeah, we got a First Friday. Well, we, we experimented right with it, with it right now, so. We're just trying to see how it's going to work. But right now, the, the first one ain't do too good. So we just going to try to build it up, you know. And see, that's what it is, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to be honest with you, man. I'm kind of, I'm an OG, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes I like to go in the club and listen to at least one slow song. Oh, yeah. You know we what I'm saying? Slow song. We, had, we even had slow artists, though. We had R&B, though. So, I mean, it just, like I said, a lot of times people, they like the rap. So what I'm saying is, because what is the... Club gonna be for the twenty five and up around here before. What do you think the next best spot gonna be? I don't know. It's hard. Like I said, they don't support it. Like all the black clubs close now. It's hard. They don't support black clubs. Trust me. So what do you think about karaoke night on Thursday nights? I like that. I think that's, that's a nice vibe. I ain't never vibe. been there yet, but I've been just. So I've been I haven't been there, but I just know that, that karaoke is real big everywhere else. Right. You know what I'm saying? So bar, I think that's a, that's a good move for karaoke. You ever thought about bringing back talent shows? Oh. You think Bavard got talent? I mean, Bavard got a lot of talent. Far as with kids and all. Yeah. Because, you know, when we was growing up, we go open up the gym, Joe Lee Smith, or we down there at Woody Simpson. We we somewhere, and we open I mean, back talent back, shows. Back, you know what I'm saying? Is he going to bring that type of talent back? I mean, you see, back then we had community leaders. We don't have community leaders no more. So that's what you think Bavard County is missing? We don't have no community leaders. We don't have nobody that's. At, I mean, the only person I can think of is like you know. You got, of course, you got uh, Lavanda, you got um, Kenny, you got Alex Gorn. Alex Gorn, shout out to Alex Gorn, yeah. yeah. Shot. But like I said, beyond that, you really don't have no more community leaders. You All know right. What I'm saying? So we we lacked that back then. We had to, everybody was involved with stuff. You know what I'm saying? So what you think it'll take as brothers that's in their age, ready to put for it? See, a lot of people feel like you know. They in that foot right there, they working with the police or something. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's what I'm saying. You don't have community leaders because back then they worked close. You know, the police were not there. But I, I'm not, even the police athletic league, you don't even. You know, they, 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 they don't understand that the police don't be nowhere around. Right. You just leading your community into a nice population and everything being successful, though. You know what I'm saying? Correct, correct, correct. But like I say, we don't, we don't have much community leaders. You know what I'm saying? We right. don't have that no more. That's just, and, I, and I think that's one of the biggest steps that we're missing right now. Look at the parks. Look at our local parks. Look at our local parks. <laughs> they, 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 they tighten up. Joe Lee tighten up. Uh, I mean, what I'm saying, but you it took see, years. You don't see a lot of stuff going on at the local parks. In the right, hood. in the community. Don't the kids see. don't even come outside no more, man. I mean, they in the house playing video games. You know what I'm saying? Then they come outside, and everybody's shooting. Everybody doing stupid stuff. They don't even respect the kids no more. 
And I'm just, you know, back then when we was growing up, you know, it was like an older person come outside. We'll stop cussing. You know what I'm saying? You got to stop because they're going to tell you up. They're going to tell your mama that she told you up. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, not, hey, these kids don't even have no respect. You know what I'm saying? At all. They all on TikTok cuss. All right. <laughs> so, have you ever been, uh, you ever been to the feds? Yeah, I just came. That's where I just came from. You came along, you did to the feds? Nine years. Um, did you go to the uh, penitentiary or you went to a medium high, medium low? Okay, medium high. A medium high? Medium high. With that being said, I done been to the penitentiary. And I've been to the medium high. Well, both of the mediums I went to was just like uh, they was both medium highs. And that's ran something like a penitentiary. You had it's better right, detectives. You got, you got you got them, but uh, penitentiary guys there. Right, right. You know just just coming down. Yeah. So you you in the penitentiary, they gotta check your paperwork, they gotta do all that stuff. Right. You know, so. Right. But what I'm asking you to do that type of man time that you did when you was in there, mm -hmm. do that transfer your life over to the streets a little bit? How to respect a man, uh, you know, because you go by rules in politics, and uh, you know what I'm saying. I mean, as far as respect, I always been a respect, respectful person, right? Until I get disrespect, so I could say that. Mm, I mean, it probably just kept me on the path of being respectful. You know what I'm saying? All right. But I was already a respectful person. Like I'm a, I'm a, if I bump into you, I'm gonna say, "Excuse me, a hundred times. Excuse me, my bad. Right. Excuse, that's just me." While you was in there, did you study any type of religion, or you was always been a you always been a Christian? I've always been a Christian. I mean, I I practice a little Islam, but it, you know, there's a couple of things I did. You know, I, yeah, because you, you, when you in that situation, you get a chance to you get a chance to see, you know, just practice different things. But I'm a Christian. You know what I'm saying? Full blooded. And that's what's up, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Amen. That's what man, it that's is, my, man. That's my lane right there. You know what I'm saying? So, big dog, talk to me now. When you, when you was in there. Did you like felt like you just didn't have it no more when you coming out being T Mac, or you just knew that you always had it in to get to the top where you at right now? Um, I mean, I really never. It took you a little time, you know, I mean, to crawl. Not really, because I mean, I already had a plan. I already, I already said what I was gonna do. And see, that's what that's one thing a lot of people fall at as men. They don't have a plan. Yeah, you gotta have and I've been hearing you saying that for a little minute, right? <laughs> you got to. And that's the first thing I stress since I've been home. I had a plan. That's why I was able to be successful on some of the things that I did. Correct. Even though I failed a little bit, but I still had a plan that kept me going. You right, see what I'm right, saying? Right. A lot of people did have a plan, and as soon as they fall, they ain't got, they, they get over with. Yeah. You, you know it. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, I, and I applaud you right there on that, because you always say you had a plan. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, and if people don't understand, a plan is like a blueprint of your life and what you're going to do in the next five to ten years. Oh, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? See, I'm a thinker. I, I, I think... 24 7. Like, I never stop thinking. Like, I might wake up 6 o'clock in the morning and my mind automatically go to racing. I can't go back to sleep. Yeah. Because I already I got some stuff in my mind. You know what I'm saying? Would you ever to. I might be like, why are you up so? Would I'm you ever like, type person show. think of something to go jot it down and just write? You know what I'm saying? I mean, a lot of stuff, I get up and I just do it. I just, I'm going to execute it right then. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, very few things I write down because I'm. A person that if I get my mind made, if I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. It's done. It's done. <laughs> I can think of an idea tonight about a party. I'm gonna have a fly out in the morning. And that's what's up, man. <laughs> and so how how you do it? Just be like, I'm gonna be honest with you. What I was heard when the man came say, yeah, man, you know the man got a. Uh, a 360 deal. I said, what the hell is a 360 deal, buddy? <laughs> you know, he said, no, he got the uh, intribution deal. The I said, man, the man ain't no rapper, man. Right. What type of deal he got? So I said, you know what? I'm going to ask my cousin. You know what I'm saying? I done yeah. seen you all week. I couldn't I'm gonna get asked right on the podcast live. <laughs> Everybody get to talk to him. Uh, do you got some type of distribution, distribution deal? Yes, I do. Empire. With, with Empire? Yes. How was it hard to get an intribution deal? How did you I mean, they propose? basically gave it to me as a Influencer, you know what I'm saying? Just an influencer, you know what I'm saying? Because I got artists, but it just basically because influence. They see a lot of stuff that I'm doing. They see a lot of, uh, you know, relationships I got. You build up artists. a good catalog. Right, right. So right. That's, that's basically how I got it. You know what I'm saying? So, so was it proposed to you, or you went to them with a blueprint and said, "Okay, here's my. This is what I do. This is my name." I mean, what what happened? I mean, it was kind of like talked about. It. You know, we just you know because the. A partner in um, um, Empire, that's his cousin. Right. Like one of my closest friends. Right. Uh, me and him were real cool. And uh, matter of fact, it was a uh, Mook manager. 
They were real tight. Man. Shout out to Moon Boy. Yeah, yeah. Definitely shout out to Moon Boy. Shout out to Moon Boy. Yeah, for real. Just got the phone. <laughs> shout out to my brother. But listen, uh, anyway, make a long story short, yeah. we, just, we all just politics. We all, you know, I, they always came to me like when it was time to run their artists. Right. Stuff, you know, put their artists in Florida. Like most artists, when they from out of state, they'll get with me to run all the artists in Florida. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's what's and, up. And one of them was uh, they artists was at the time. Well, he still they artists now, um, but they they changed it to uh, others records. Right. You know what I'm saying? My partner Waleed and uh, Luke Nass is his is his artist. You know what I'm saying? But they had a, a bunch of artists. They used to have me run through Florida, so we just built a relationship between with him and Boot Manager. And we, they just gave me a, um, a distribution. Sport influencer, you know what I'm saying? So I understand you say that you was a manager. Do you have also have a manager too to manage you, or you just got accounting and whatsoever what you do? Accountant. Yeah, I got an accountant, but I don't have no man, nobody that manage me. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> <never> manage. <laughs> you know what I'm saying?